Did you know every time you leave a comment, I will read them and I will think of what is the better idea for my next video. And today, actually, this person reached out to me on a tweet. Felix B. He asked, can I make a video on how to plan an experiment, how I would have done it back in my postdoc? First of all, thank you for this question because as a medical writer, I don't get to do any experiments anymore. But I do have a lot of project management tips that I have learned and I felt like these are really essential if I were back in my postdoc or PhD. So I hope this is going to help you and let's get started. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Before you even go to the lab, what you should do is literature research. Find out, are there plenty of literature already? Does it worth doing another experiment? Or are you better off just reading and summarizing everything in a literature review? That's the background research you need to get done before you even start writing a funding proposal or running a research experiment. A research project that is overly explored it's a risky one because you may end up catching the tail of that research topic and you end up having no funding, no new postdoc opportunity by the time you graduated. So you want to find something that is at the growing phase of the exponential curve if it is bacteria growth curve. You probably don't want to explore something that is too explorative like in the initial phase it's going to take 10 years of your PhD before you can even say you have done anything to graduate. Another point that I have appreciated from Pavel, one of our featured channel, a lot of time people think of this difficult topic as a research gap. But sometimes research gap happen for a reason. He mentioned NMR studies of protein as one of the examples, which are usually technically not feasible. That is why there is such a knowledge gap there. Knowing all these technical challenges of why something is not done is also another part of the picture. And as a PhD student, and if you have the flexibility and freedom to explore what to do, this is the baseline and the groundwork that you have to get done and nobody else can do it for you. When it is a technically challenging project, you want to validate it by asking the right people. So ask your postdoc in the lab or PI that is in your same field or go to a conference and talk to people that has done this type of work because they all look like 500 words in methodology but behind the scene, how does it really look like? Sometimes you can go to JOF, Journal of Visualize Experiment to really visualize how is it like to do those work? Are you capable technically in your institution to do the work? When you find finally a knowledge gap that is feasible to do, then is the time you plan an experiment design. And this is the phase that you get to realize what are the objectives in your research. Once you narrow down so-called the scope of your research, define clear objective of your experiment. That's also involving your PI to pick and choose what is relevant and what is feasible in your situation. I don't know about you, but back in my undergraduate study, I would wish I can design a magical experiment that can answer all of the questions on the planet. This is not a channel to talk about experimental design and biostatistics in great depth, but you need to consult your advisor and your statisticians that are responsible in your institution so that you are designing an experiment that is effective and statistically powerful to answer the question that you are proposing because otherwise you are actually wasting time and resources on something inconclusive. Before you start the experiment, you need to ask yourself how much budget do you have? and how much time are you allowed to do the work? How much manpower is available? When I was designing my own study in biological experiment, my undergraduate research student team always come into play. Whether they are available on certain hours when I needed to do the experiment is a critical consideration. Coordinate that with a booking system, build an Excel spreadsheet. And as a former postdoc, I can already guarantee you there are a lot of nuances when it comes to preparing experiments in your lab. Things like when is your reagent arriving? Do you have a booking with the equipment that you are helping to use? Are the central facility really expensive? And do you have the budget to pay for all the hours that you wanted to work there? Even if they are free resources, does your lab may need to use it 24 seven. So maybe you don't get access to the lab until next month. As a project manager, you need to track every details on an Excel sheet. Simply put one week as one 
sale, every month has four square, meaning there are four weeks, by using a merge sales function and write down all your tasks and colorize. If you work in a team, basic question like who is coming in which day to feed the fish could be your day-to-day -day chore that you don't want to face, but that's the reality of most biological science research. You might want to use Google Sheets and have everyone accessing it so that everyone can contribute their timetable, check out the responsibility as a collective team. And now I can gladly tell you a little more about how to track on Excel is the conditional formatting button. You can define yes, no pending as different green, red, and yellow colors. You can list out all the equipment or the booking beam time, or the people, power, every category that you need as an experiment. And then you can put all the date and status, is it ready or is it not ready? So that you can have a bird's eye view to realize, are you prepared for the experiment? Are you pending one reagent for your two months of work? So I hope this video is going to help you organize yourself a little bit. Depending on the scale and complexity of the experiment, you might want to use OneNote or Trello to collaborate even more. To share documents or check off boxes of to-do lists on Trello, they are all really helpful. When I was postdoc working on multi-level experiment, sharing document and observation in the lab. I'm really passionate about this topic, although I'm no longer working in the lab because if every PhD student is slightly more organized, 10% more organized in the research, saving 20% of their time and budget. I'm already feeling like a millionaire because I contribute to science indirectly in the way that you're wasting less reagents, you're wasting less time during your PhD. This is PhD coffee time. If you appreciate this virtual coffee and if my food for thought is helping you to become a better scientist, don't hesitate to hit the like button and share this with anyone that you're working with so that everyone can progress a little bit more as a scientist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.